Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the West. The path of a champion is never given. It must be taken. Hammer, deep left center field, and the Rangers walk it off. Reaching the mountaintop requires being physically stronger than those who oppose you and mentally tougher than what you thought yourself capable of being. Payoff pitch, got it, swing it. The Rangers are once again battling for the American League pennant. But to achieve their ultimate goal, they will have to reach deeper and push further than ever before. Greatness demands sacrifices, and they are ready to put their hearts and bodies on the line to earn it. The road will be hard, and the climb will be steep. But the path of a champion lays before them, and it's theirs for the taking. The Venerable Coliseum Rangers and A's open a game in a three game series and what very well may be the final step in step one for the Rangers in this magical 2016 season. Hello again folks we welcome you in I'm Dave Raymond with Steve Busby magic number is one Rangers can take care of that tonight. This is though just step one for Jeff Bannister and his team. They've been echoing that sentiment for well, a couple of weeks lately, but the reality is this is a big night tonight. This team still has that very loose attitude. Yeah, and Dave, a couple of things tonight for the Rangers. First of all, get uh, Cole Hamels going again. Get him back on, on a winning note and, and get him set for the postseason. Second thing is wrap up a spot in the postseason. A win tonight, it's all over with the Western Division, and that's what the Rangers are shooting for. Cole Hamels indeed has the start nine wins on the road this year, hoping to add number 10 tonight. It was last year when Cole Hamels won the final game of the regular season for the Rangers. To give him the title, can he do it again tonight? We'll find out. From AT&T,
Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer today for incredible deals and see why Ford is the best in Texas. By AT&T High Speed Internet. Get a deal worth talking about. Get high speed internet from AT&T. And by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. From the other side of the bay tonight, the opening game of this three-game series, and we check in with Emily Jones. Well, Dave, finally the Rangers no longer in need of anyone else's help. All they have to do is win one game, and they clinch the American League West Division title for the second straight year. Carlos Beltran being sure to keep the uh, temperature even keel in that Rangers clubhouse. I know the... You know, we were hoping to do that at home, but uh, unfortunately, you know, it didn't happen. So at the end of the day, you know, we're going to go out there and try to win this series. You know, it's important for us. So hopefully we're capable of, uh, you know, get this one out of the way and, you know, have fun, celebrate and continue to finish the season strong. And all of the veterans in that clubhouse, not just Carlos Beltran, but Adrian Beltre, Elvis Andrews, Cole Hamels, Colby Lewis, all those guys really stressing to this entire team that this is just the first step, clinching the American League West, just the first step. So much work still to be done as far as securing home field advantage throughout the playoffs uh, and ultimately uh, the the final goal, which is, of course, winning the World Series. So trying to keep things at a very tempered level. Dave. All right, yeah, thanks, Emily. And uh, this team has done an outstanding job of doing just that as we get underway tonight. Kendall Graveman getting things started with a ball to Carlos Gomez. Gomez once again in that leadoff spot where he has done so well since Jeff Bannister inserted him there. And a fly ball out to shallow center, but tracked down by Brett Eitner. And there is one away. Take a look at our Southwest Airlines starting lineup for the Rangers tonight. At 90 and 63, Gomez leading it off. Then Ian Desmond now do. Carlos Beltran, Adrian Beltre, and Rugnet Odor there in the heart of the order. Jonathan Lucroy catching, batting sixth. Mitch Moreland, Nomar Mazzara, and Elvis Andrews will round things out tonight for Jeff Bannister. So Desmond, 287 average. And he takes strike one from Kendall Graveman. Desmond didn't play on Wednesdays, had two days off, so well rested coming into today. And a hole 0 and 2 here to Kendall Graveman. So Graveman, a quick out of Gomez, firing strikes to Desmond. And he gets him swinging. And just like that, two quick outs. You know, Kendall Graveman this year uh, has been on the upside of things lately. Uh, his last 20 ball game, or last 20 starts, he has pitched very, very well. 10 and 10 for the year, 421 ERA. They had a ERA, however, his last 20 ball games is down in the mid threes, 274 opponents average. That strikeout is 100th of the year, something he doesn't do a whole lot of, and nor does he walk a lot of opposing hitters. And he comes right after Beltran with strike one. Oh, you're right. I mean, a guy who uh, absolutely challenges hitters to put it in play. And Beltran acquiesces. Backing up on it is Semyon, and he'll get it over to first in time. And it's a 1 2 3 for Kendall Graveman in the top of the first. And now Cole Hamels, the man who took the Rangers there last year, has a start tonight.
Sending it for the Rangers, and we take a look at what the Oakland A's will be sending today. 20 games under 500. Marcus Simeon at the shortstop leading it off. Brett Eidner in center field. Ryan Healy, the third baseman, bats third. And then Chris Davis, the man we highlighted before the game in left field. Danny Valencia, Stephen Vogt, Jake Smolensky in right field. Their DH is Renato Nunez and Chad Pender, the second baseman, will round it out for the A's. Well, Hamels. Gets Simeon to offer it the first pitch. Yeah, Cole Hamels making his 31st start of the year. He and Martin Perez now with the, the high water marks on the Ranger ball club. And Cole trying to get things squared around. Now he's faced uh, Oakland three previous times. But uh, this year has been going well for Cole until his last four starts. The last four have not been exactly what Cole wanted. He still has a very good ERA and a very good opponent's batting average against. But trying to square things around. Well, bouncer to third and Beltre makes it look routine one away. It's pretty safe. You can get somebody to ground the ball toward Beltre. I think you got a pretty good chance. <laughs> yeah, the breakdown on Cole's uh, arsenal. A little over 43 percent fastballs along with the cutter which for him is also a fastball. It ends up being about 67 percent or two thirds of the time and an equal number of curveballs and change ups for Cole. And the base on balls has been what has been bothering Cole. He said that's that's not like him. He said I've got to find a, a way to counteract that to get away from that because right now I, the time of year I can't pitch around the base on ball as effectively as I should. Now that has absolutely been the story this year for Cole Hamels as he deals with Brett Eibner here 212 hitter does have the six home runs and he shoots this one out toward right field Mazzara is there and there are two gone. Take a look at the Rangers defense delivered to you tonight by the New Braunfels Convention and Visitors Bureau. Well, Mazzara with that play in right field. Ian Desmond in center. Carlos Gomez is in left. Beltre and Andrews on the left side of the infield. Rubnet Odor, Mitch Moreland on the right. And for the 10th consecutive start for Cole Hamels, it is Jonathan Lucroy behind home plate. And this uh, an alignment for the Rangers, both offensively and defensively, we have gotten used to seeing since uh, Carlos Gomez joined the ball club. This has been the predominant one that Jeff Bannister's put out there. And, a pretty good one. You look up and down that lineup. Uh, they are very good offensively and the defense is very solid. Yeah, Jeff Bannister definitely seems as if he has settled in a little bit on this lineup. I mean, seven of the nine hitters with 20 or more home runs. That helps. Well, bouncer up the middle by Healy. Oh, well struck. And he continues his hot hitting against the Rangers. He is on with two out. Uh, Ryan Healy continuing to impress and uh, we have seen him a couple of times now a couple of different series since he came up right after the All Star break and got off to a slow start with the A's but boy lately he had a 10 game hitting streak uh, that was snapped a couple of days ago but it looks like he's getting ready to go on another tear here to finish out the season. Well, he squared up some balls last weekend against the Rangers and hitting now almost well, right around 370 against them after that hit. Now here's Chris Davis. And everything stops when he comes to the plate because <laughs> yeah. you've got to pay attention to this guy. Yeah. He has been some kind of hitter against the Rangers. It's uh, yeah it's one of those matchups you really can't explain given the overall numbers that he has. Whatever the reason it has been a problem. And this one shot down the right field line but foul. One and one to Davis. <laughs> Cole kind of a wry smile on his face. And he made a pretty good pitch. And I'm, I'm sure he was uh, not expecting that ball to be hit as sharply as it was and come that close to being extra bases. A young man that got himself a souvenir. He and his dad brought a glove with each and they put him to use right away. That's good to see. Dads and sons making memories out here already. Yeah, that is an excellent night for those two. <laughs> Healy at first and now the count one and two on Chris Davis. We take a look at our Ford leaderboard. And you look at most home runs in a single season against this franchise and that's a point worth uh, distinguishing because Mantle's 11 home runs in 1961 that was against the Senators before they had moved obviously to Arlington to become the Rangers. Davis takes one low it's two and two. 
talked a lot last weekend when Davis caught Reggie Jackson, then passed him. Mm -hmm. And now when you, you, know, you stretch out a little further, back to the franchise's history, there's still something to, to shoot for for him. It's also pretty good company for Davis, some of the sluggers in this franchise's history. The rookie Healy at first. Just underway tonight here in Oakland. 2 2. And it's a little bit in. Cy Hamels kind of wanted that one. You got Simeon and Eidner relatively quickly. Healy with the base hit. Now a big payoff pitch to Chris Davis. And he'll earn another one. Well, that fastball that uh, Davis took on the 2 2 pitch, a pretty good indication of why he has been so good against the Rangers. The Rangers can't get him to swing at that ball that's just off the plate and up a little bit. That's where a hole is for most power hitters. And Davis against the Rangers won't swing it. Well, he's hitting 252 now. Somebody's getting him to swing at that pitch but not the Rangers. Waits patiently on a 3-2. He does strike out a decent amount. And he'll take that one in the dirt. Another walk for Davis. A's have a couple of base runners in the first. Now we'll see if Cole can't work around a first inning base on ball here tonight. That was one of the things he said he wanted to avoid at, at almost at all costs. But uh, now he's got to deal with uh, two on and, and two out with Valencia. Now that walk there pushes him past Santiago now. So he officially the most walks in the American League. Now Danny Valencia. And Valencia had a very good series last weekend in Arlington. 17 homers for the years. First pitch to him. And Hamels buries that one. We talk sometimes, Joe Buzz, about good walks, right? Or, or walks that aren't as damaging. And, and with Chris Davis in that spot, first base was not empty by any stretch. It is early in the game. But is that one of those where three and two, you don't want to get into the guy? Uh, you got to just yeah. try to make a tough pitch and hope that he goes for it? That, to me, that's kind of a neutral walk in the yeah. first inning. It's neither good nor bad. That's a good breaking ball in there for a strike. One and one to Valencia. I, I think if you ask Cole, getting ahead uh, one and two against him and then losing him would make it, in his mind, not a very well executed at bat. Hamels trying to right the ship a little bit for himself individually. Last four starts have not been up to his standards. And he'll have this one and one more remaining in the regular season for the Rangers head on to postseason play. So these last two pretty big for him. It's 1 1 to Valencia. Get the call that time from Jerry Meals, our plate umpire. And you look back over the last four starts, Dave, and I think one of the hallmarks uh, for Cole Hamels has been a long first inning. And he's sneaking up toward 20 pitches in this frame, but he has gone as high as 33, 34 pitches in a first inning during this streak. Uh, this time gets Valencia to pop one out into short right field. Mazzara came in a little too far, and he'll Stay with it to make the play inning over. A's leave a couple. No score after one.
of Fox Sports Southwest brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. And by the all-new three-row Mazda CX-9, meticulously crafted for driving, because driving matters. So a scoreless inning in tonight. Adrian Beltre will lead off the second inning for the Rangers. It'll be Beltre, Rugnet Odor, and Jonathan Lucroy. Kendall Graveman puts it on the outside corner. One and one to Beltre. Adrian having a little fun there with Jerry Meals. Discussing the merits of that last pitch. That is two and one. Graveman, 25 years old, 6'2", a little over 200 pounds, good size right-hander, born and raised in Alabama. The count two and two. Well, we mentioned meals on the plate. Chris Conroy at first. Gabe Morales, we saw him as a sub in our last series back at home, and Paul Nart down there at third. Two two from Graveman. And a bouncer up the middle to his left for it. Simeon. And there's one away. Well, so far, Graveman has been pretty much a fastball pitcher tonight. And that's not something we saw from him last time. Uh, he's hit 94, 95, and uh, 196 tonight already. And that would be lie the uh, idea that he's not overpowering. He can be overpowering when he has stuff like this. And pitching in this ballpark, I think it lends itself to having your best fastball when you're feeling good. The cool weather, uh, it, it's always been a park that fastball has played pretty well, and that gives a pitcher confidence coming in to go ahead and throw the fastball. Hard to hit the ball out here at night. Well, it, uh, it makes you more of a, a relaxed pitcher on the mound. Time taken just before he delivers his 1 0 to Rugnet Odor. 64 degrees at game time tonight. So it, it is much cooler, certainly, than we see back home. Yeah, folks already bundling up. When the sun goes down here, it can get chilly. <laughs> now, for the Texans, they're soaking it up. Feels good. Two and one to Odor. Well, a scoreless start to this one tonight. Magic number at one for the Rangers. So a big evening. And it's two and two as he ties up Odor. Seems to me Rugnet has seen fewer and fewer fastballs. When he sees one like that, he is going to jump on it. Yeah. And he's trying. He's trying to make himself not swing at the pitch up shoulder high or above, but it's uh, it looks inviting to him. Now Graveman's 2-2 pitch. And we will get another. Yeah, this is very much a pitcher's park. You've mentioned it before. Yeah. We reference it all the time whenever you see performances at this ballpark. Uh, the ball is put on the West Coast, typically when it cools down at night, doesn't carry as well, but very roomy. And in that foul territory, it's got to right. be awesome as a pitcher. It is. Uh, and that's why you see teams come in here and hit 20 or 30 points lower than their season average. Odor hits this ball well to center field. Eibner going back, but it's not going to carry far enough. Two gone. Marugnet gave it a pretty good ride. It's not real cool here yet, so the ball's going to carry a little bit better this time of the ball game than, say, four or five innings down the road. But uh, whatever breeze there is is kind of swirling here in this ballpark. But uh, as the air gets heavier, the ball will uh, just not fly at all. So. Graveman has retired the first five he has faced. And now Jonathan Lucroy. And right in there with strike one. So because you have all the foul territory, because it is such a big outfield, the ball doesn't carry as much, you're more willing as a pitcher just to come right after guys with I think balls? so. Yeah, I think so, Dave. I, I don't think you, uh, I think you, you tend not to try and be as tricky or keep the ball off the good part of the bat. Here, if you get behind 2-0, and oh, uh, you're pretty safe with most guys throwing it up and out over the plate. So here, go ahead and hit your best bolt. Just don't pull it. 
but it hit, you hit your best ball to center, or right center, or left center, and I'll bank on the on the uh, ballpark eating that fly ball up. Foul territory. I, I don't think you can do much with that as a pitcher. You can't pitch the, for the guy to hit the ball in foul territory, but uh, you certainly can pitch up, which lends itself more to foul balls. I guess the, the reality is that the, you're right. I mean, nobody's going to pitch. Maybe Greg Maddox or somebody can pitch to foul <laughs> territory, but but it just it might pick you up what maybe two extra outs, one extra out on any given outing. That I, you otherwise would end up in the seats. Yeah, in, in this ballpark, it may be more than that. Uh, you know, we what we got to do is count during the series. I'll, I'll bet the three-game series there are probably. Uh, nine or ten outs that we're going to see that uh, it wouldn't be in most ballparks. Well, there's a well struck ball but right into the glove of Smolenski and again the Rangers go one two three in the second inning. Out here on the West Coast as we look across to the San Francisco side of the bay. Second inning here in Oakland. Cole Hamels worked around a couple of base runners in the first. He'll go after Stephen Vogt to start the second. And gets in there with strike one. Vogt a left-handed hitter, then a couple of righties, Jake Smolenski and Renato Nunez. Both the only left-handed hitter in the lineup tonight for Bob Melvin. 254 hitter does have some power. A bit down from last year, which was uh, really a breakthrough year for Vote, his first year as an All-Star. Made it again this year. Last year had 18 home runs, drove in 71 for the A's. Hamels just misses with a fastball in the inside corner or off the inside corner as the case may be. Yeah, Cole asking uh, Jerry Meals where was that pitch and uh, Meals indicating it, it was a little bit low from his viewpoint. Our Fox tracker would disagree with him, but pretty good pitch by Hamels. It's a, a very fine one two offering. So right back after him now two and two. This one popped foul. Beltre with the long run. And there's one that uh, yeah. almost did make the seats. Yeah. At Globe Line Park, that is halfway back in the lower seating bowl. But uh, here, it's it's playable if you can get there in time. Right uh, between the tarpaulin and the uh, front row. I mean, that's kind of an indication of how much foul ter territory there is. Beltre couldn't even get yeah. there. Yeah. That's a that's a haul. Two two. Looked like he might have been looking for something else there. Been a tough finish for him. Go ahead. Well, I was just say tough, tough, tough ending to yeah. this year for both. 
Yeah, he got off to, as you mentioned, he got off to a, a good start, an all-star start, and uh, has fallen on hard times this month. Both leading off this second inning, and he does strike out for the 78th time this year. First punch out tonight for Cole Hamels. Yeah, and that's just one strikeout, but for Cole Hamels, that was an important man because he had not been able to get ahead of a, a middle-of-the-order hitter in this game and put him away. And he was able to get a hold of vote, get ahead of vote 0-2. Uh, just missed with an 0-2 pitch and had a 1-2 pitch that could have been a strike. But then he finished him off after a couple of foul balls, and that's that's good for the psyche. Smolenski serves one into foul ground. And would have been playable. But it, it sounded like Moreland was being called off. He didn't see it. He never saw the once, once it got up there, he couldn't see it. He was telling the guys yeah. in the infields, hey, give me some help here because this is uh, this is a difficult sky right now, a twilight that I don't have any idea where it is. There it is, Mitch, right there. In the, we can see that. <laughs> yeah, from here, piece of cake. That is tough, though, this time of night where that sky starts yeah. to take on about the same shade as the ball. One strike pitch. And some narrow misses early on here. A couple of wispy clouds up there tonight. Little tapper and Hamels will take care of it. Two gone. So just like in the first inning, it's the first two batters he faces. And that will be Renato Nunez. Batting in the eighth position, designated hitter, number 22, Renato Nunez. Just the fourth start of the year for Nunez as the designated hitter. And you can see the numbers haven't been there for him. He's a corner infielder by trade, but a guy who uh, developmentally his bat is ahead of his defense. Relatively few at bats so far though here in this September call up for him. Nunez in the minor leagues, a guy with some very good power, hits for a good average. And the count one and one. You notice even even Cole getting up there at 95 at times tonight, topping out with that fastball. And that's pretty good indication that uh, both starting pitchers here tonight feel pretty good. This ball hit hard into left field, a base hit for Nunez. Just his second in the big leagues. Cole hung him a changeup on one and one, and Nunez jumped all over it. With his track record, uh, minor league home runs, etc., Cole's probably lucky to get that ball back. That was right up in an area that was was screaming, hit me when it left Cole's hand. Nunez obliged. Yes, he did. Good wood on that one, and he is on for Chad Pender. Figure Nunez is not a real threat to run over at first. Pender at 184 coming in. Called up on August 19th. This is just the 16th game in which he has appeared for Oakland. One and one the count. Now Bob Melvin. Working a lot of the kids in in the second half of this season. It's been another one of those years that got away from them relatively early. And in Oakland, they're all about developing for next year. That's a story that has been told a lot recently for Oakland. You see, Pender's numbers at AAA Nashville pretty good. And it's two and two. I'd kind of like to see Bob Melvin be able to work all the young players in he wants to tomorrow and Sunday. <laughs> that would be the Rangers have clinched. Just go ahead and run them all out there. We'll have yeah. a, a spring training game if you want. Now speaking of which, Buzz, in the sixth inning, the Astros have tied their game with the Angels. There's a swing and a line drive right center. Base hit for Pender. Nunez doesn't have great speed, but Ron Washington's going to wave him. Here comes a relay throw from O'Dor, and the tag 
Craig got him. Inning over. A strike to the plate from Rugnet Odor out in short right field. And that puts an exclamation mark on the second inning. Scoreless through two tonight in the Coliseum. Here come the Rangers third inning and it'll be the bottom third of the order Mitch Moreland starting things off it'll be Moreland Nomar Mazzara and Elvis Andrews against Kendall Graveman and Moreland shanks it foul the count one and one so Graveman's been very good tonight. Paul Hamels has worked around some base runners. Got a little defensive help there a moment ago. The out at the plate to end the inning. 1 1, and Moreland shoots it up the middle, but right there for it is a shortstop Simeon, and there's one away. Well, it seems like every time Mitch walks onto the field here at uh, the Oakland Coliseum, he hits baseballs hard. And he hit that one as hard as you possibly can. A scorched line drive, but the overshift got him. Simeon playing uh, up the middle. And all he had to do is move one step to his right and just barely had time to do that. That's a good sign though for Mitch. You can see him starting to starting to crunch the ball one more time. Yeah, when he gets hot, boy, those those hot stretches last for a little while. So a hard out, and now Nomar Mazzara. Talking about a guy who's recently kind of gotten himself in a little bit of zone. Nomar. Yeah. Seems like he's settling in again. Trying to pick it back up, especially with the power. A couple of home runs lately, and long home runs, as a matter of fact. One and one to count to Mazzara, who among American League rookies at 277 average is fifth best. Leads rookies with 20 home runs and the 64 RBIs. And also leads American League rookies in runs, hits, total bases. He's second in walks, second in slugging. He's pretty good. And there you see the last week basically for Nomar. Nearly 500 batting average. They play him straight up. Well, Nomar, you're talking about his um, offensive skills. Defensively, he made this play. Got the uh, great relay throw set up for Rugnet Odor. But uh, Mazzara getting over there quickly enough to cut that ball off. That ball gets by him, goes to the wall. You have no shot. Open has a one nothing lead but Mazzara cut it off before it got to the track and then threw a strike to Odor and Rube did threw a one hop strike to Jonathan Lucroy at the plate. 
his seventh outfield assist. Now he's come back to work this count full. Yeah, he and Rugi pairing up beautifully on that play. Payoff from Graveman. And Mazzara might have swung at ball four, but fights it off. How about that though, those two, those two combining what Mazzara 21, uh, Rugnet Odor 22 years old. Wow. Between the two of them, they couldn't even get a pension yet. <laughs> We're talking about the Oakland A's playing the kids. <laughs> the Rangers depend on them. <laughs> yeah, here's the payoff. And this ball stung to center field. Back on it is Eibner. And there are two away. The Rangers have hit some balls hard yep. tonight. Yeah, couple of couple of line drives to center, a line drive to short. Nothing to show for it yet, but some pretty good bats yeah, against Graveman. All right, it's time for a Chevy game break. Let's uh, send it back to Dana Larson. Yeah, thanks, Dana. So that was a, a ball game that was early on in favor of the Angels, 2-0. The Astros have come back. Magic number at one now for the Rangers with the Astros. So that's just as well. Rangers would like to take care of business on their own. Yeah, and, and with Seattle, too. They haven't yeah, completely gone true. away yet. One and one to Elvis Andrews. And Elvis, a guy who has been on a very good run lately. And he hits this ball hard to second base. Right there for it is Pinder. And it's a 1 2 3 for Graveman again. He's perfect 2 3. We play two and a half of scoreless baseball today at the Coliseum. Guys are ready. Got the belt on and everything, I think, in those unis. <laughs> yeah. Well, fun at the old ball yard. I haven't seen those Pez dispensers in a while. Making a comeback? Oh, boy. Yeah, it depends. It depends on the. Uh, on the crowd, they still they still roll those out every now and then for the youngsters. Problem is, there's so much better candy now. That was fun, yeah, but it wasn't always you know the tastiest. It's like <laughs> eating little pellets of chalk. Definitely 
all about the the mode. As we get going here at the bottom of the third, top of the order for Oakland. Marcus Semi had grounded out in the first inning. Today, Bob Melvin putting him in that leadoff spot, giving the A's a look of some power up top. And it's two and two. Good change up there from Cole Hamels. Starting to work that in a little bit more. A little better command of it. After him again, and he gets him to swing and miss. A second strikeout of the night for Cole Hamels. Same pitch. Got that change up down, and when Cole gets that thing going, he can be awfully tough because that uh, looks just like a fastball, at least the way hitters swing at it. It must look just like a fastball to them. They swing at it and could have swung a couple times before it got there. So good out to keep Semyon off the bases, and out Brett Eibner. Eibner flied out to right field in the first. He's 0 for 1. Scoreless game here tonight. The opener in this three game series. Final three road games of the year for the Rangers, and it's 1 and 1. So back to back fastballs to Eibner. See what he comes back with here. More heat. Yeah, didn't quite get that in where he wanted it, but uh, still had enough enough on it down in the strike zone to get it by Eidner. You see Cole kind of grimacing a little bit, saying, Dog on it. Get that thing across the plate, will you? Talking to himself. Pitchers have a tendency to do that. You're all by yourself out there. Nobody, nobody else wants to talk to you. Another strikeout. Third of the night. And a lot of heat in that at bat to Eibner. Yep. Yeah, playing the up down game or down up in this case went down three times and then up the ladder. And Eibner just couldn't stop himself. Said, oh, shoot. I didn't really want to do that. So Hamill's a lot sharper in this third inning. Let's see if he can take care of Healy. This guy's kind of a key. Mm hmm. Because he has been a tough out for everybody in a Rangers uniform lately, and he takes strike one. He is 14 for 37 against the Rangers this season. Went in a hole here, 0 and 2. A little cut fastball that got in on Healy just enough. It'll make that left foot kind of bark at him for a while. Well, now Hamels has gotten ahead with a with a good four seam fastball for strike one then a cut fastball in on the fist and what that does it opens up both sides of the plate now he is a little defensive because he knows he hasn't seen anything off speed yet so that's going to make him be a little bit leery of of just looking fastball Rangers playing him straight up on the infield straight away and deep in the outfield the 0 2 and got him swinging. Came off speed, got Healy out in front, inning over, scoreless through three. Now let's go to Rick Renner in our rooms to go lounge.
All right, our greater coverage of baseball tonight brought to you by T-Mobile. We look at the playoff picture, division leaders, Boston, Cleveland, and the Rangers, and very tightly bunched, but all with comfortable leads. The wild card, a much different story, is we could go in here with the fourth inning. Blue Jays and the Tigers controlling the wild card at the moment. Baltimore, Houston, and Seattle still very much in the picture, all within two games of a playoff spot. And Seattle and Houston both winning currently. Yep. And Baltimore kind of reeling of late. They ran into a hot Boston club. And they're tied tonight. Uh, the Orioles are with Arizona. They play in extra innings. Baltimore in danger of falling further behind in that wild card race. Blue Jays beat the Yankees 9-0 today up in Toronto. Let's see. 2-1 to Carlos Gomez. Slow chopper third. Playable for Healy. And that's 10 in a row retired by Graveman to start this ball game. And he is looking very comfy so far. Now Kendall Graveman has a, a very good fastball, well above average for him fastball tonight in the, in the mid 90s, plus excellent movement. He's throwing that uh, two seam fastball that has a lot of movement in toward a right hander. He's also taken a little bit off and being able to run it further away from a left hander. So now to Ian Desmond and he finds the outside corner for a strike. Desmond struck out swinging. In the first inning. It's one and one. Uh, Graveman has put together a, a very good year this year. Ten wins ten losses a 421 earned run average for a, a struggling A's team. Thrown a couple of complete games. He's thrown a shutout, and he has pitched very well here in his own home ballpark. Among the best in the American League when pitching at home, to the tune of a 3.35 earned run average. It's his 30th start of the year. And did he go? They'll appeal. Yes. Chris Conroy at first brings up Desmond. Two away. No, great, been able to go up the ladder with Ian, and uh, Desmond had swung at that pitch down out of the strike zone. First time up for the strikeout. This time, not able to check his swing on that pitch up above shoulder height. Graven with a couple of strikeouts, a couple of lineouts, and a couple of balls very well hit out to center. And now Beltran with a two hopper to second. And Pender with the routine play. It's another one, two, three. For the right hander, and we'll go to the bottom of the fourth, with no score.
thank Rangers fans for such a great season. Help us run out the ballpark this Monday through Wednesday with special $10 tickets using the online coupon code REDOUT. Go to TexasRangers.com slash specials to red out the park and take advantage of this great offer. All right, bottom of the fourth inning. Cole Hamill struck out the side in order in the third. And we'll see how the lefty fares here with the fourth inning as he pumps one right in there to Chris Davis. Davis in an extended at bat walked in the first inning. He's been a very dangerous opponent this year for the Rangers. One and one. Our Kubota power stats tonight. Cole Hamels, he's getting as many swings and misses this year as maybe ever. High fly out there to right center. And Mazar will put it away. Yeah, that swing and miss rate, over 27%. That's fifth in the American League. Pardon me, ninth. But for Cole Hamels, that's been that's a big part of the story this year. He's getting a lot of ground balls, second highest total in his career, a lot of swings and misses. The the only the only real drawback this year, and he's talked about it at length, has been the walks. And now Danny Valencia, boy, he is establishing strike one. On just about everybody these last couple of innings. That's it. Eventually stranded two base runners in the first with that fly ball out, and he's in a hole here, 0 and 2. And again, Hamill's mixing in that change up now a little more liberally. That's be starting to become his uh, best off speed pitch, and that's a big one. He's able to get that breaking ball at times down and into the right hander, but being able to throw that. Uh, it swing and miss changeup really works into his arsenal. Little tapper down the first baseline, but foul. And Valencia hitting 221 over the last a well, little over three weeks now for the A's. Going to slow down a bit for him. A couple of guys who have kind of run out of steam at the end of the year. Ah, oh, there's Prince. Oh, I want to be a part of that conversation right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great to see him with the ball club now. Still a great influence. Little bloop out to center field. Base hit for Valencia. They do a lot with that one, but enough to get himself on base. That's the fourth hit of the night for Oakland. Yeah, for whatever reason, when Valencia is playing at first base, he's hitting about 400 now for the year. And uh, I, that's one of those things that there is no explanation for. It's just how things have gone for him. But uh, I'm saying, boy, it's a good thing it wasn't 10 degrees colder. My fingers would have fallen off. I hit that thing. <laughs> Well, was it worth it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But now Stephen Vogt. And again, fastball right in there for strike one. One of four strikeout victims so far tonight. The goal Hamels. Who moves closer yet to 200 for the year. He's at 191 at the moment. One and one to count to vote. Vote though, it has been a bit of a down year for him. And one of the guys we talked about earlier who's kind of run into a wall here in September. Still a dangerous hitter. And he's in a hole one and two. There was some, some news around the ball club today. Rangers welcoming back Jeremy Jeffress, who addressed his teammates in a uh, closed door meeting today. Check swing. And no. So 
tonight. All right. Two and two the count. Jeffress not in uniform tonight. He will be in uniform tomorrow. And it's still going to be a little while until he is, you know, at that stage where he's prepared to contribute in game action. He's got to get back throwing a little bit. 2 2 pitch. And this one in foul ground. A lot of foul ground over there. Moreland with the long run. <laughs> and Odor not going to be stopped. Couldn't get to that one. Though. Boogie's going in there after a hot dog and a coke. <laughs> all out effort all the time. Do something. Mitch, Mitch knew where he was. He said, I, I see that up there in the third row. I'm going to reach in there and grab me. That yeah, ball came right back at him, too, <laughs> by the way. So two and two now on Valencia. One out. Pardon me, boom. Valencia at first, and it's a full count. Hamels did issue the walk of the first inning to Chris Davis, his 76th of the year. It's an ongoing career high for him. He does not want to do that to vote. 3 2. Just missed, and the A's have a couple of base runners. Well, the last Texas Chili Company dollar hot dog night of the season is going to be this Wednesday, September 28th. Rangers and the Brewers head out to the ballpark early. Enjoy all the hot dogs you can eat for just a buck each. Be sure to wear your red. Use a coupon code red out at TexasRangers.com slash specials for $10 tickets. Red out. Darn autocorrect. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> So Valencia second now vote at first. And here is Jake Smolensky. And Smolensky hits it down to Beltre. He'll get the one. Make it two. What a double play by Adrian Beltre to win the inning. Forces out Valencia. And then that sidearm sling to first. And guess who leads off the fifth? We'll be back at the scoreless game. Baseball at Fox Sports Southwest brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer today for incredible deals and see why Ford is the best in Texas. Adrian Beltre, great defensive play to in the bottom of the fourth. Leads it off in the fifth. And he just wanted the bag of third foul. All right, our Coors Light cold hard fat. Adrian Beltre 
And five players remaining on that 2011 World Series team. Beltre, Elvis, Eric Holland, Colby Lewis. One and one. Now to Beltre and of course Mitch Moreland. Rangers with a win tonight would clinch the American League West. This ball hit well out to right field. Smolenski with plenty of room, however. And don't look now, but Kendall Graveman has not allowed a Ranger to reach base yet. One out in the fifth. Now he's had it going pretty well tonight. The, uh, uh, nothing tricky about him. He's had the two strikeouts. They've both been Ian Desmond, but it's been a lot of heavy sinking fastballs with good movement. And uh, he's been able to keep the ball down in the strike zone except when he tried to elevate it. And it's been effective. Rugnet Odor slashes one foul. Rugi flied out to center field, hit a ball pretty well, in fact. But not quite well enough. Eibner got about a step out onto the warning track. And straight away center. It's one of really two balls that looked like they could be trouble. Now a comebacker, and Graveman will scoop it over to first. Graveman, 14 straight retired to start this game tonight. And now we'll deal with Jonathan Lucroy. Mentioned earlier, Graveman with a couple of complete games, one shutout this year. So he has shown that ability to go very deep in ball games, and certainly the way he's throwing tonight, you get the sense that he could go for a long time. It's one right in there for a strike to Lucroy. Yeah, and that was just his 50th pitch of the night. That's the key for him. It's, uh, you know, he fills the strike zone up with uh, quality strikes, good movement, and not a lot of trickery involved. And it's another strike going to. Lucroy trying to get something started at two hits and 16 tries on that last home stand. Working with a career best. 23 home runs, 78 RBIs this year. A very good year for him. Began the year with the Milwaukee Brewers. But a deadline acquisition for the Rangers and a big one at that. The one two. And he's down swinging. That's another perfect inning for Kendall Graveman. And he is perfect through five. Halfway there tonight, no score. Fireworks show of the season Friday September 30th courtesy of Big Green Egg come support the Rangers they play the Tampa Bay Rays 
Use a coupon code fireworks to get upper level tickets for just $14 at TexasRangers.com slash specials. All right, bottom of the fifth inning. No score tonight. And Cole Hamels is trying to match zeros with Kendall Graveman, who has been as good as you can possibly be to this point. Renato Nunez singled in the second. And he hits one down to third base. And on top of it, Adrian Beltre. And Nunez retired to start the fifth. Very different outings tonight by these two pitchers. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's good to see from a Rangers standpoint. Good to see Cole Hamels uh, getting things back in order. Uh, still not as crisp as we have seen Cole before. But compared to the last four starts, this is a, a marked step forward. This is exactly what you were hoping for. From Cole Hamels here tonight. Got this one and uh, one more, and should the Rangers uh, wrap things up, it may not be a, a full outing his next time. Now the lefty's first pitch to Chad Pender is fouled off. It's interesting talking to Hamels a couple weeks ago about where he was in the season and what was left for this team and for him to accomplish. One of the one of the questions was about home field advantage and that's been a big topic of conversation. How big an issue for the Rangers can they get home field advantage and Jeff Bannister keeps directing the focus to let's let's win the division yeah. let's win a ball game exactly you know tonight. But the point is Hamels when asked directly about that said I don't know that home field advantage is as big a deal as just being hot being yeah. being playing good baseball going to that time of year. Well, I think in, in other sports, it's more important than it is in baseball. Yeah, it's important in baseball, but it's not the be all end all that it is, say, in, in basketball uh, or football for that matter. Sure. Hard bouncer down the third baseline, and Pender is on for a second time. Some trouble picking that one up for Gomez, and it's a one out double for the A's second baseman. Uh, he's two for two with a pair of extra base hits. Hamill's got that breaking ball that stayed up for him a bit. Uh, that was about thigh high when uh, Pender got to it. And just by Adrian Beltre. Adrian playing off the line a, a step or so. Couldn't get back for that ball. So Pender in scoring position. He's have had a lot of opportunities so far tonight. Hamels has been able to make the pitches when needed and he's gotten some very big help from his defense tonight as well. Marcus Semyon lead off man up there 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout. And if you're Cole Hamels right now you're probably thinking well you know the way this game is going I better not give up a run here. I better be uh, pretty careful with Semyon because he's very much a run producer not let him beat me in this situation. Never know. One might be the difference in the game. Simeon, very good power for a shortstop. 26 home runs this year for him. Long pause, and now Hamels gets him to foul it back. Only Miguel Tejada has hit more home runs as a shortstop in Oakland A's history. He did it several times too, but he is the lone shortstop who has flashed more power than Marcus Simeon has. You can see what he has done with runners in scoring position this year. He has Pender at second. And Pender not going anywhere. A's on their last road trip and they just recently came home. They were swept by the Astros. This ball scooped out toward left field coming on Gomez and he makes a real nice running catch. He can close on a ball out there in left field. And that's a big out. Yeah, the advantage of having that experience as a center fielder and that's what he was uh, prior to coming to the Rangers. Gets a good jump on this coming straight in. And he's got that good speed. And that very good instinct. 
Yeah, we think of all the ways in which he has made a difference for this team since being signed several weeks ago, and part of it has definitely been yeah. on the defensive side. So now, two out for Brett Eibner. Yeah, and especially some of the plays that Carlos Gomez has made in left field at Globe Life Park. Now, Globe Life Park has a huge left field area, and he's fit in perfectly there because he, he covers so much ground. He's made some great plays defensively that have saved a lot of runs for the Rangers. 1 0 from Hamels. Ooh, got him to swing. Eibner struck out in the third inning, 0 for 2 tonight. I was going to say this this A's team though on their last road trip they had four games in Kansas City and then three in Arlington. And my goodness they put up 65 or whatever runs in those seven games. A little high. They came home got swept by the yeah. Astros. So they yeah. a different team here. They're having trouble tonight getting runs across. They had a lot of base runners. Bob Melvin has seen his team to this point leave four of them out there. I haven't seen one thrown out at home plate. 2 1. A bounce at third base. Beltre will put the tag on Pender to win the inning. So another scoreless half inning for Cole Hamels takes us to the sixth. Brought to you by Sonic. Tonight's jackpot worth $500 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. If a Ranger hits a home run this inning, Roger Reno from Chico wins $500. If a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, well, Roger wins $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. Boy, that, that all sounds good. As Mitch Moreland stands in and takes ball one from Kendall Graveman. I could really go for a, a home run in this sixth inning. Graveman is not allowed a base runner yet. All right, he's been very efficient. Roller into a shift. And Pinder is there to make the play. Moreland retired for the first out of the sixth. All right, time for a Chevy game break. Let's check in again with Dana Larson. Now, buddy. Number 30, Nomar Mazar. Yeah, pretty wild, Dana. Thank you. Sixth inning here, no score. And a sharply hit ball. Right to Marcus Simeon and Nomar Mazzara erased two away in the sixth inning. 
Well, some hard hit balls, but uh, right at folks. And there's not much you can do about that. Now one, They've been positioned Andrews. well tonight. A couple of line outs, a couple of deep flies to center field. Graven, for the most part, has been able to keep the ball on the ground, which has helped him. Now here is Elvis Andrews, who grounded out in the third. Graveman trying to go through the order twice without allowing anyone on base. Elvis has proven to be a very tough out, though. And well beyond this, just this second half. It has been a career year for Elvis. When you look at that, even in very recent ball games, he's as hot as you can get. Play him straight up. And he hits it sharply, but right there again, Simeon. And it's six perfect innings for Kendall Graveman. We'll go to the last of the six tonight in Oakland. Still no score. Last Saturday home game of the season, first 15,000 fans to the park. Colby Lewis bobblehead, courtesy of Kroger. Come support the Rangers. Get your tickets, TexasRangers.com, or by calling 972 Rangers. It's a handsome lot. <laughs> Enjoying the game. A couple of my uh, youngest progeny, my daughter Sarah, right there in the middle, and to her right is uh, Stephen, my youngest son, and Michael Bloom, uh, Sarah's husband. Happy to be enjoying the cooler weather. Yeah. Brian Healy. High fly, shallow right field, and Nomar Mazar right there. All right, we're just talking about that Colby Lewis bobblehead. Let's go back to June, Buzz. You remember yeah. this? We're in the middle of June. Colby on an afternoon ball game was smoking hot. He was uh, perfect through seven, got into the eighth, just had the uh, A's eaten out of his hand. And uh, that ball in the ninth inning broke up the no hitter. Go leading off with the ball right off the tip of uh, Nomar Mazar. Nomar had forever to go. And uh, the final out of the ball game for Colby. And the Rangers a big win here. But uh, Colby had it within his sights. Just let it slip away late. And you know, that's the second time that Colby had uh, taken a no hitter against the A's deep into a ball game before in this ballpark. He said, you know, one of these times I'm going to finish it. <laughs> Don't know when it's going to be, but one of these times I will. Well, it, you know, those things are so much fun to watch. Yeah. And, you know, you get so kind of wound up in the middle of it, understandably, as Davis takes the ball. It's one and one. I think one of the great moments from that 
that game, that broadcast, is I remember watching was the post-game interview in his candid answer <laughs> That's at the right. end. Oh. That's right. You know, guys are always so political. You know, listen, just want to put my team in a spot to win. And he, he said all those That's, right things. Yeah. But then he did he did acknowledge how much it hurt yeah. to not get it. Yeah. Yeah. And Colby is, uh, of all the guys in the Rangers, and there are a lot of straight shooters in the Ranger ball club, you never have to think to or, or listen to softly to hear what Colby's thinking. He'll tell you. And it's, and it's great. That's a, that's a great thing about him. He's always up front, always honest about everything. Well, this guy has battled tonight. Cole Hamels has kept the A's off the scoreboard. Just about to hit Chris Davis there. It's two and two. Well, he has kept them off the scoreboard with really only one perfect inning so far tonight. That was in the third. But otherwise, he's had he's had multiple guys on pretty much every inning. Well, I guess in the fifth, he had only one man on. He's had to deal with some some traffic. Stays two and two. Yeah, Cole subscribing to that baseball axiom that I was always taught is your job as a starting pitcher is to keep the other guys off the scoreboard until your club scores two, and then if you want to if you want to give up one, you can. But that's it. One. That's it. Yeah. And he has trying to keep it in as close as he can, and he gets Davis looking, and that's a big strikeout tonight. So talking about the Colby Lewis's answer after that game, let's, let's flash back his conversation with John Radigan. Radigan, who has Colby Lewis with him? Yeah, we got Colby here. Try, try to put into words how you're feeling right now, Colby. Ah, it sucks. Um, I don't know. They they uh, they played really well behind me. I threw uh, put a lot of balls in play and uh, played great defense, huh. defense behind me. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. Uh, it didn't waste any time. No, no. Just pretty much here it is. Here's how I feel about it. We'll move on from there. I mean, we all knew it did. Yeah. You could. You could. So why try and pretend it's anything other than that? It, it did. That it uh, it bothered us up here in the booth talking about that. It, you know, it, it was hard because you know how much Colby has invested in uh, each time he goes out there. He's the kind of guy that he's never really sure if it's his last outing or not. I mean, that's how he goes about things. He wants to leave it all out there, and he does every single time he takes the mound. And knowing that he got close for the second time against the same team, yeah, that, that kind of sticks in your craw a little bit. The one, two. Well, you completed two no hitters. Mm -hmm. Did you ever? Get close like Colby did and just fall short like that? No, the closest I ever came after that, Dave, each of the next two outs, or next two starts that I had after my first one and after my second one, I, I got into the sixth inning uh, with no hitters each time and uh, then lost them there. Well, a strikeout of Valencia. And there's another perfect inning for Cole Hamill. We'll go to the seventh, no score. And it's time for the
All right, for the game summary, this was a huge play. The base hit out into right field. Nunez was at first. He's not a fast runner, and Rugnet Odor's relay got him by a mile. That's as close as anybody has come to scoring in this one. Kendall Graveman, perfect through six innings tonight. 18 up, 18 down, and he gets Gomez. Swing wildly through strike one. Yeah, Carlos is going to end it right into the perfecto right there with that swing. One and one. Carlos Gomez the fly out to center, or ground out to third. One of the things we've marveled at lately has been his ability to kind of dial in the approach a little bit. Mm -hmm. Take less wild swings. Tough bouncer deep in the hole, short. Long throw, Simeon, base hit. So the perfect game and the no hitter gone. And that's a tough way for it to go for Kendall Graveman. But to a much bigger point, the Rangers have a huge runner on base. And a nice round of applause by the folks here. Over 26,000 on hand uh, at the Oakland Coliseum tonight. And very appreciative of the effort that Kendall Graveman has given. If the third baseman doesn't have to play up because of the speed of Carlos Gomez, he's able to make that play. Ryan Higley, though, playing even with a bag. Had no chance. That ball was over his head, and there was not a thing anybody could do on him that side of the infield. Well, especially with the speed of Carlos Gomez, because he can he can boogie. A strike to Ian Desmond, and to that end, uh, he is someone that Kendall Graveman's going to have to concern himself with here. Gomez with 17 steals this year. Desmond struck out both times. He has come up against Graveman tonight. Yeah, and 17 steals, and folks will say, well, that's not very many. You got to remember, he wasn't on base with the Astros very much. You know, he hit 210, and his on base percentage wasn't much higher. So this is a limited uh, sample for him. And there he goes. And there's a hit into right field. Gomez will round second. He heads to third, and the Rangers have him on the corners in the seventh inning. Perfectly executed, and the guy that was at the plate was the perfect guy to have there. Ian Desmond, and we know his proclivity for hitting the ball the other way. And he certainly did it there. He got it by the, the dive of uh, Valencia at first. That is right in his wheelhouse. That plays into his hand as well as anything you could possibly think of. Now the Rangers have something going. So Gomez third, Desmond first in our TXU Energy power player to watch. Desmond. Yeah. He does well here. 414 average. With some power. And that's a big hit in this seventh inning. Infield in. Carlos Beltran makes it foul and out of play. Boy, and that's a, a big advantage for a guy like uh, Carlos Beltran. You pull that infield in. Gives him just that much more area to work with. He can be a a wizard with that wand that he swings. Chance here to bring home a run with something as simple as a fly ball. One and one to count. Beltran, 91 RBIs this year, 28 homers. And he does a very good job of converting that man at third into a run with less than two outs was it almost 60 percent of the time here's the one one and a bouncer high chopper first and there's going to be no play at the plate and once again Beltran gets him home Rangers score the first run of the ball game tonight the speed of Carlos Gomez makes it happen Going on contact, Carlos Gomez, and uh, anybody with less speed would have been out at the plate, I think. Uh, it looked like Valencia caught the ball with time to make a throw to the plate, but with Gomez coming down the line, now watch the jump that he gets. Boom, he's coming right away. And Valencia is very well aware of the speed that Gomez has, and it's a risky play for him to try and make the one at home. If you don't get an out, then you're up opening up uh, an inning for something huge, but Nice job by Carlos Gomez. Nice job by Beltran to get the runner home. And there's a swing, and that one is hit a ton into the left field corner. Gone! A 
home run. 31st of the air for Adrian Beltre. Rangers lead it 3-0. And 100 RBI for Beltre with that blast. How about that? They wasn't wasting any time. And this for a guy who took a perfect game into the start of this inning. A little chopper over the third baseman's head, over Healy's head. The infield single, a hit and run base hit. An infield chopper for a run. And then Adrian Beltre putting himself in position to get his head slapped. <laughs> and also getting a little angry with the guys that are doing it. I ah, just kidding around. <laughs> Elvis going to apologize now. <laughs> Here's Rugnet Odor. So, 3 nothing Rangers on a night where their magic number sits at one. And there's the first hanger that uh, Kendall Graveman threw tonight. And that's the wrong guy to throw it to. You give Adrian an opportunity late in the ballgame with a hanger. And uh, more often than not, it's going to end up out there. That thing was powdered. The only difference was he didn't go down to one knee. That, that was a little too high. For him to go down to one knee. Needs that lower, lower hanger. One and one to Odor. And that ball hit high in the air out to right field. Tracking it down as the center fielder Eibner just in front of the wall. Two away. So they got that first run across. And then Adrian Beltre with a big two run homer. Rangers with a three nothing lead. A win tonight. They clinch the division. That or losses by both the Astros and the Mariners. Now the Astros were leading late but have given up two runs in the ninth inning. Angels and Astros now tied at two in the ninth. Pardon me tied at six in the ninth inning. So that game getting more and more interesting the Mariners with a large lead in Minnesota they're on top eight one seventh inning over the twins one and one to Jonathan Lucroy who is lined out and struck out home run leaders all time list Adrian Beltre passed Kingman the other day and closing in Vladimir Guerrero. This ball hit hard center field. And Lucroy is on. Well, the Rangers before this inning had hit a few balls hard, uh, but they were few and far between. Now all of a sudden they've gotten a Graveman in this inning. And uh, you know, there's no telling how much the, the chopper for the base hit that broke up the no-hitter perfect game. What kind of effect that had on Kendall Graveman, but he's left some balls in the middle of the plate after that that he had not before this game now this this is the third time through for the Rangers and they are four for six this time through the order so far here's Mitch Moreland the runner bluffing at first we probably not going anywhere you know of the the two outs too one of them was hit well a couple feet shy yep. of the wall out there was yep. about 388 feet. had some good contact bouncer into that shift Simeon cuts it off throws to first and it ends the inning but the Rangers break through first three runs in the top of the seventh they stand and stretch in Oakland Rangers with the lead
All right, the progressive upcoming schedule for the Rangers, these three here in Oakland, and then it's home for the final six. We get going here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Brewers and the Tampa Bay Rays. Monday through Wednesday for Milwaukee, interleague play, and then the Rays out of the East Division to wrap things up out of Globe Life Park. Adrian Beltre. Busy night at third base. Two run homer at the top of this inning. It's 3 0 Rangers. Trying to clinch their seventh American League West title is Stephen Vogt. Starts at the bottom of the seventh with a base hit. Now Hamels has been in this spot more than once tonight. It is the first time. That the leadoff man has reached against him, but he has had a lot of base runners to work around all evening. Well, he puts vote on, but now he does have the bottom third of the order due. Smolinski, the number seven hitter. He tapped one back toward the mound, and then he also hit into a double play. And you can see double barrel action. Out of the Rangers pen is Hamill spikes one to Smolinski. Last inning we mentioned that the Angels had scored a couple of runs in the top of the ninth. Well they, they added another. It's a 7-6 Angels lead. Down in Houston in the 1-0 pitch. It's a little above the zone. Look at the inning by inning total for him. It's just a slower start. Just a handful of innings. He had to work a little extra. The 2-0. Well, and that's that's in marked contrast uh, to what we've seen from him, uh, Dave, and that he hasn't had that 25, 27, 30 pitch inning uh, that we saw him break out with. As a matter of fact, uh, two times ago he had a couple of them uh, early in the ball game, which really Preventative from uh, getting deep into it at all. Looks over at first, both not going anywhere. And the 2 1 pitch, that one is lined over third, but foul. Nobody moves. <laughs> <laughs> now, Hamels has gotten Smolinski to hit into one double play tonight, and that was a big one back in the uh, fourth inning. Let's see if he can't get it done again. What was that? Somebody see that thing? Where'd that ball come from? It's been a long, rough season for those boys. Full count now on Smolensk. You know, I've heard it said the relievers can't have any nerves, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> Infield a double play depth. Field straight away, relatively deep on Smolinski. Now Hamill steps off. So should that score hold up down in Houston and the Angels win that thing, Houston would be eliminated from the division race. Seattle, however, still hanging in there. 3 2 pitch, bouncer third. Beltre to second one. Odor's turn. In time, got him. And that is around the horn the longest way possible. Beltre way over on the line. Five, four, three. Rangers had, uh, had kind of a dry spell as far as double plays were concerned. Finally got a couple of tonight behind Cole Hamels. Hamels now has induced 18 double plays this year. And that's uh, sneaking up on his all time high, which is only 19. The Rangers uh, with the two night tonight have. Uh, Turned 160 ground ball double plays this year. An amazing number. That was one of the, the real big numbers and stories of the first half of the season. Fernando Nunez 
one for two. And a very big moment thrown out at home plate. To win the second inning. Hasn't had a whole lot of activity since being called up. This will be just his 14th at bat. Nunez with a couple of hits. But as we mentioned, a very good power hitter. 23 home runs in the Pacific Coast League and at 75 RBIs for Nashville. He's had both of his big league hits off of uh, Cole Hamels. And his first major league hit uh, in that series down in Arlington last week. Two strike offer. And it is popped foul out of play. Hamels to this point some shutout baseball remember last year was the final day of the season Rangers needed a win over the Angels and that was back home at Globe Life and it was Hamels who made that start to a complete game three hitter send the Rangers to the division title and ultimately fairly deep into that that playoffs a 9 2 win and here he is tonight with a chance to pitch the Rangers to back to back division titles. Now if you were asked someone what uh, what the Rangers went out and got Cole Hamels for it would be these two two types of games you know last yeah. year uh, finished that off with a perfect game or I mean a complete game and tonight facing a perfect game he was almost perfect himself so. You know, when the chips are down, that's what you want your horse for. And the Rangers uh, get ready to throw that saddle on Cole again. He talked about his first postseason game with the Phillies as mm -hmm. being one where he had to deal with a lot of base runners. He made a lot of trouble for himself, but pitched out of it. And this one popped foul again. And that even now, many years later, looks back and almost wonders, I don't know how I did it, but I did. Right? Right. I got the outs. I made the pitches. And... You know, you know, we talk about it all the time about pitchers. That's a great pitcher. If you don't have your great stuff, if things aren't going your way, that you can make adjustments in game and get it done. And he has tonight against a guy who was well better for the first six innings. Right. Two strike pitch. I'll do it again. Yeah, and sometimes there is no answer to the question. Well, how'd you do it? Sometimes you don't know. Uh, the, the fact is, though, that experience is is uh, built on what you've done in the past whether you know what happened or not for sure you know you may not be able to emulate exactly how you did it but just knowing that the result was there that you wanted is what's important that's what makes you feel confident yeah we talk about that so much with the way this team has come back all right. year and how they feel so confident in the dugout that they can always get it done well same can hold true for a guy out there on the mound Pitch to Nunez, very high. One and two. But you're right. I'm sure you fielded a lot of questions the last several weeks about Cole Hamels. Mm -hmm. Is he over? Sure. What's going on? Well, I don't know, but I do know this. He's going to compete for you. And he gets a strikeout of Nunez. Luke Roy finishes off with the toss down to first. And it's another goose egg. And we go to the eighth, three nothing Rangers.
Cast hosted by Ben Rogers and Jamie Newberg. It's your Rangers news every week and enjoy expert analysis. Go to TexasRangers.com slash podcast to listen on your desktop or subscribe to Texas Rangers podcasts on iTunes. Paul Hamels with some handshakes in the dugout on a job very well done tonight. It wasn't always as pretty as he would have liked. But there's nothing more attractive than seven zeros up on the scoreboard. Meanwhile, offense has given him three runs of support. Nomar Mazzara will lead off the eighth inning. And John Axford, first man out of the bullpen for either team tonight. And John Axford, the veteran right-hander, on for his 66th appearance of the year, six and four with a 416. Saw him a couple of times down in Arlington uh, against the Rangers and still has uh, very, very good stuff. Breaking ball bounced to second base. Chad Pinder is there. And that is the first out of the eighth inning. All right, time for another Chevy game break. Let's check in again with Dana Larson. Now, Matty, number one, Elvis Andrews. Wow, so a really tough evening for the Astros down in Houston. And the next pitch, Andrews serves it right back to Axford. Tough play defensively, but he'll finish it off and take care of Andrews two away. There you see seven strikeouts, two walks, six hits allowed for Hamels. And always the most important Solid. number. Yep. That's zero. Zero in the run column. And that's uh, that's the important one. Cole uh, did a lot of things much better tonight than we had seen him in his past four starts. To his standards, not quite where he wants to be, but this is a good step in the right direction because of the results you just mentioned, Dave, getting the uh, seven shutout innings. That's the important part. But it gives him something very solid to build on for uh, at least one more start. Or not at least. Uh, it'll be one more start yeah, before, yeah. before the Rangers move on. Carlos Gomez trying to stay loose. <laughs> that, was, that was quite the move right there. <laughs> Here's the 1 0. And it's popped foul. A lot of room over there. Long run for Danny Valencia. And how about that scoop of a catch? Wow. Valencia caught it and then took it into the Rangers' dugout. And it ends the eighth. All right, 3-0. The Rangers lead to the bottom of the eighth. Here we go.
Rangers with a 3 nothing lead over the A's here in Oakland and six outs away from locking up their second straight American League West championship. This is the opener of a three game series the final road trip of the regular season here in Oakland. Two more day games left beginning tomorrow. Three o'clock first pitch coverage begins at 2.30 here on Fox Sports Southwest as Hugh Darvish gets the ball for Texas. His outstanding road numbers going up against Ryan Healy. That will be one of the featured matchups tomorrow afternoon. Three o'clock first pitch here on Fox Sports Southwest. A big thank you to the fine folks at AT&T High Speed Internet for getting us ready for game two of this three gamer between the A's and the Rangers fellas. Yeah thanks Emily right back at it tomorrow afternoon. Rangers and A's and another big start for you Darvish. There's some work still to get done here tonight however. It's a count of one and two on Chad Pender. Matt Bush has come out of the pen for Cole Hamels. Now Matt in his 56th appearance of this season seven and two with a 261 ERA. Opponents uh, hitting just a click over 200 against him. Well he has been as sharp as you can be the last several times out. Eight scoreless outings now in a row. And here we are late September the guys first yep. year pitching and he's still in 99. I mean that arm is held up and he looks crisp. And how Jeff Manister and Doug Brokale have used him have been a big factor in there. Dave. They've had to learn what Matt can be asked to do and what he's not quite ready to do yet. And there's no saying that he can't go back to back to back days. Uh, next year or when he gets a, a little more accustomed to to working out of the bullpen but uh, they've used him very judiciously and I think Doug Brocale has done a great job of, of letting uh, Jeff Bannister know when Matt's ready when he'll be at his optimum and trying to make those optimum outings uh, a little closer together. Defensive change as well Bush not the only new player out there is Jared Hoying has come in to play right. Zara. We'll watch the rest of this one from the bench. Bottom of the eighth inning, three nothing Rangers. A win here, and they clinch the West. Bouncer third base. Beltre. One away. Well, this one's going to be all about Cole Hamels when it's said and done. And tonight, uh, you know, the, the closest he came to giving up a run was this play that uh, Mazzara made a great relay throw and Rube Neto Door cutting down at the plate. That was as close as the A's got tonight. And after that, Cole seemed to gather some steam. He got the big double play uh, off of Smolinski's bat to end the threat. And then again, going around the horn off Smolinski again uh, the next time up. And uh, Cole just got better as the evening went on, which is what you love to see. And he's the ace. The presumptive game one starter when the Rangers get going in the postseason. And that's that's why. Right like tonight. All in two to Marcus Simeon. A's trying to play spoiler tonight and just hold off the Rangers celebration as long as possible. And boy, they put up one whale of a fight for the first six innings of this one. Did he go? Yes, he did. Chris Conroy rings him up. Simeon, first strikeout victim tonight for Matt Bush. An, an example there, too. Uh, Matt Bush makes a great pitch. Watch Jonathan Lucroy. On a two strike pitch, he knows that there's a breaking ball coming. He has to get down and block that ball. It's like they're having to run her at third because on the two strike pitch, if it gets by yet, the guy's at first base. He did that twice tonight with Cole Hamels on the mound. And Luke Roy is as good as anybody I've seen recognizing the situation and making sure that ball stays near enough home plate that he can get the out at first. That's just a great job of, of uh, heads up catching by Jonathan Luke Roy. A big difference maker in this late season for the Rangers. What an addition he has been. Is count one and one now on Eibner. We've, we've talked about it before. Rangers were in the market to add starting pitching at the trade deadline. That market was very competitive, and the price is extraordinarily high. 
in absence of finding a partner for some good starting pitching they went out and they got a catcher who made every starter and every reliever better and it turns out certainly now in retrospect you look at it and you think that was a that was a genius move talk about making lemonade my goodness two and two it would have been nice to have say a Chris sale or sure. someone like that that's one guy that's every fifth day and now what you're talking about Dave is Jonathan Lucroy back there four out of five days making whoever is on the mound on that day and the relievers better pitchers themselves well, yeah that's uh, that is huge it's kind of like getting a another pitching coach as well adding to your staff 2 2 he just did hold off and it's a full count on Eibner Rangers inching closer by the moment Doug Brocale on the left Jeff Bannister on the right so many tight games this season so many come from behind wins and a strikeout of Eibner Bush strikes out a pair in the eighth. And we'll go to the ninth inning tonight. Rangers leading 3 0. and unstoppable drama the 2016 postseason begins October 4th go to MLB.com slash postseason for a full schedule now Rangers are three outs away from assuring their spot in the postseason the see if they can add to their lead in the top of the ninth inning Ian Desmond Carlos Beltran and then Adrian Beltre against Chris Smith the pitcher in the game for Oakland Desmond with a big hit in the seventh inning one for three tonight. Well one down and one to go as look at Chris Smith's. This is his 12th appearance of the year. No record a 338 ERA in the league hitting just uh, 178 against him. A variety of uh, off speed pitches for the right hander. But one down as the uh, Astros have eliminated themselves from the Western Division race tonight. They lost 10 to 6 to the Angels. 1 1 and Desmond and a hole here now with two strikes. So the Astros out of the running for the division, still very much alive in the wild card, although yep. every game almost like a playoff game for teams like the Astros and Mariners at this time of year. Yeah, and depending on the severity of Correa's injury, that, uh, yeah. boy, that would be a huge blow to that Astro ball club. While the Mariners taking care of business on their end, they're leading 10 1, ninth inning in Minnesota. Full count now on Ian Desmond. And so that means that it truly is up to the Rangers to take care of their own business tonight to clinch this thing. And I think that's the way you want it to be. Sure. Yeah. 
not that you really care too much about what other people say or think but you'd rather feel good about yourself winning it instead of somebody else uh, seemingly giving it to you. Pay off to Desmond and a comeback or snared by Smith. Nice play. One out in the ninth. And there's Sam Dyson. Getting ready. For his job at the bottom of the ninth against the three four and five hitters this thing not over yet you have to face Chris Davis. In that ninth inning the nice thing is. There can be no more than one runner on base when Davis comes up. And that is important here is Beltran. 0 for 3 but with an RBI ground out in the seventh and that scored the first run of the game. Moments later Adrian Beltre would hit a two run homer. And it's now one and one. Leave it to the two veterans. <laughs> to get it done. Huh? Important game and if you want to throw a Cole Hamels in there make yeah. it three veterans. Yeah two and one to count the two guys and, and much has been said written about. Those two. Very similar career arcs both in their 19th year. In the big leagues both without World Series victories although each of them have played in a World Series they right. both have come up short. And they both wonder how many more opportunities will I get. Three one. And this ball hit hard but foul. Full count on Beltran. And both of them. Likely. Eventual Hall of Famers. I mean they're, they're, they're both tremendous. And what they've been able to accomplish in their careers. Now you know when we start delineating the all time lists that these two are on it, it just goes on forever it seems like and they're moving up day by day almost a foul ball three and two on Beltran well one of the all time greats certainly in the, the handful three four switch hitters the game has ever seen. Mm -hmm. Beltran, especially when you mix in the speed at the beginning of his career and the defense with which you played as he draws the walk. And then this next guy. One of the great third basemen ever easily our at and high speed replay. Let's go back to the seventh. Look out. That pulled the lightning. Made it three nothing Rangers number thirty one for Adrian Beltre. One hundred RBIs. And so fitting as you point out that. Beltran and Adrian Beltre would be the guys to drive in the three runs tonight. Pinch runner. Toronto to Shields is taken over for Carlos at first. Smith from the stretch and this ball hit high in the air to center field. Eibner is there. And there are two away. Additional change for running for Number three, Lino the Shields. No, well, Adrian flying out and Odor coming up next. It seems like it's about time for Rugda now to hit another home run because every time Adrian caught him in the last month or so, Odor said, "No, you're not catching me." And he's uh, gone back ahead. So he tried uh, for the last time up right after Adrian's home run. Odor sent it about 385 feet to right center, and unfortunately, it's 388 to the wall. <laughs> you're right, though. These two they go back and forth. And a hard smash down to first. Knocked down by Smolensky. Smith just does get to the bag in time. Wow. And hopefully did not hurt himself, but the inning is over. One man left. Sam Dyson to try and finish it off for the Rangers when we return.
Rangers baseball at Fox Sports Southwest. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency. Low fares. Nothing to hide. By AT&T High Speed Internet. Get a deal worth talking about. Get high speed internet from AT&T. And by your Texas Ford dealers. This is your local Texas Ford dealer today for incredible deals. And see why Ford is the best in Texas. Beautiful side of the Bay Bridge leading back to San Francisco. And a beautiful side is Sam Dyson. Heads to the mound to finish this thing off in the ninth. Appearance number 71 for the uh, bearded right-hander. He is uh, 35 out of 40 in save opportunities. Uh, 250 opponents batting average. And I don't think any of those uh, 40 save opportunities had as much meaning as this one does for Sam and for the ball club. But I'm sure that Dyson is kind of pumped up. He wants to finish this one off in style. And his first pitch misses to Ryan Healy. It'll be Healy, Chris Davis, Danny Valencia in the ninth. And to that end, he comes out, and the first pitch he throws a 96 mile an hour sinker. Now, how many times have we seen Sam come into even a save situation and take it a little while to get warmed up to 95, 96? And this one pinned on the outside corner. One and one, trying to save it for Cole Hamels. Seven really strong innings tonight. He battled for it. He only won for three. Rookie has been swinging a pretty hot bat. Moves ahead here, two and one. After the ball game, we'll cover all the on-field celebration. Clubhouse reaction from downstairs. You won't miss a thing. Keep it right here. Rangers live post game. We'll have everything. 2 1. Or not. Lucroy over. Oh, he jumped up bidding, too. And Jeff Bannister led the Rangers back from a terrible first half last year. Charged all the way down to the finish line, one of the last day of the year to take the division title this year. They had been in control for the vast majority of the regular season. And they have done it with some flair, though. Some excitement, the 3-1. And that is strike two on Healy. Rangers have had a share for first place in the division for 140 days. Sole possession of first place, 131 days this season. Payoff pitch, and he got him swinging. Healy strikes out to start the ninth. Well, Sam tried to let him get away. Through Mister with a 1-1 uh, one -one slider, then uh, buried a sinker to go to three and one, but then came back with two excellent sinkers. The bottom falling out of that last one. Healy could not make contact. Chris Davis, he walked back of the first inning. Was flat out, struck out looking. He bats with nobody on base. And that is huge. 40 homers this year, 10 of them against the Rangers. One guy we talked about several hours ago, Buzz. And there's one guy you circle in the lineup card and say, don't let this guy beat you. Yep. It is Chris Davis. And he's in a spot now where he can. Yep. And that's perfect. One and one. Dyson. More good gas. Puts it on the outside corner. And they're pacing in that dugout. Always talking strategy. Yeah. Dyson's 1 1. Bouncer short. Andrews, true throw. Two away. And the Rangers, one out away from consecutive American League West championships. Now batting first basis, number 26, Danny. And they're losing up. <laughs> now they won't do it quite yet, but they're getting their celebration face ready.
trying to hold back the smiles just a little bit just to make sure you don't jinx it. Keep that game face on. He, he always has a smile on though Elvis Andrews so he can jinx it. 98 that time. Yeah. Sam's little, got his celebration face on too. A little amped. <laughs> Seven shutout for Hamels. Bush with a perfect eight. And now Dyson. And a chopper up the middle. Andrews can't flag it, and that one's through. So Valencia keeps the Rangers in the dugout for at least one more hitter. Rangers have won six American League West titles. These boys, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were ready, and they're still ready. Now they've been waiting for this for a while. Game number 154, of the regular season. It has seemed inevitable for the last several weeks, and at times the games have seemed interminable. Runner going, and we'll have second uncontested. Valencia out there in scoring position, but a non-issue. Now, since this time in February, as a matter of fact, uh, what's that, six months ago? Seven months ago, that uh, the ball club gathered for the first time down in Surprise, Arizona. Jeff Bannister got them together, and that was pretty when, pretty much when they committed to being at this spot at this time of the year. Getting ready to close out their second straight division title. 2-0. and oh. And you're right, Dave, that's, that's a long haul. It is. When you look back at it, it seems like, where did the time go? It just seems like yesterday. When you're in the middle of it, boy, it's a long, long way. But it all is worth it when you get to this point. Dyson taking his time. The 2-0 to vote. All three. Well, people continue to ask, how did they do it? How did the Rangers win so many one-run games? How have they won so many come-from-behind games? Jeff Bannister keeps saying, I don't know. Except part of it is love for each other and for the competition. Yep. Love for this game. And they say, well, how do you define that? So June 27th, New York, when they were mad that they didn't get to face Aroldis Chapman because they pulled the tarp out for the rain and they hung out till 3.30 in the morning and were chopping at the bit to get it done. There's ball four. Vogt takes first base. And nobody in the stands, wet, cold, tired. But when it was time to pull that tarp off, they were excited and ready to go, and they got it done. Another come from behind win as Bannister heads out there to have a word with Sam Dyson. Now Jeff is going to make that trip as a manager's visit. That uh, That is just to make sure that the guys know that uh, he's right there with them. And what he expects to have happen will happen. I think there are a lot of heart, hearts beating a little faster than normal yep. right now. Yep, you're exactly right. And that's the way it should be. Yep. If this ever got to be routine, you might want to find another line of work. Tyson readies. One fouled away out of play. Yonder Alonzo batting for Smolensky. Trey, Odor, Andrews. Martin Soul, that infield. One and one. Now, six years ago, almost to the day, it was the 154th game of the season, just as it is today. September 25th, Rangers were here in Oakland. And they won four to three. Derek Holland started that game with five innings. Yeah. 
And Hoi Tantu, the home run off Michael Wirtz in the eighth inning, breaking a 3 3 tie, giving the Rangers a 4 3 win in their fourth American League West championship. And six years later, trying to repeat that. Two and one. You go back and you look at some of the those final moments, the clinching moments in Rangers history, and somehow or another, the Oakland A's are involved in a lot of them. Two men out there, tying run at the plate. The 2 1 pitch, bouncer up the middle. Odor has it, flips to Andrews. This one is over. And the Rangers are champions of the American League West. For the second time in franchise history, they've done it in back to back seasons. And tonight, it's a 3 0 shutout of the A's. And if you're thinking, oh, this looks a little subdued for a, uh, a division winning celebration, it is a little bit. And uh, I don't, you know, I don't think the Rangers are uh, satisfied with where they are. I think they have bigger things in mind. They're very happy to be division champions. And uh, they're, they're going to celebrate tonight. But it is going to be a little bit subdued because they do have bigger things in mind. And I think that's the important thing for them to do. Uh, to show folks that yeah we have done this we did it this year we're very proud of it we're going to go play a little longer well you say seven months to get through phase one now yep. this is phase one of a four phase plan but they've gotten the big one done yep but you got to get this one if you're ever going to have a shot at the other three exactly fourth division title the last seven years Rangers have won more American League West titles than anyone else. They now have the all-time lead with seven of them. And it is their eighth postseason appearance now. And for the second year in a row, Cole Hamels, the starting pitcher for the clincher. Yeah, last year, a complete game against the uh, Los Angeles Angels this year. Seven shutout innings against a very tough Oakland team. Tough on him and tough on the Rangers of late. But the big one got uh, got put in the books with Cole Stamp all over it. Adrian Beltre going back to the postseason.